Hey Bear Squad, what is up? It's Polar Bear here, and uh, today we're going to be talking about MDB and why you shouldn't buy old machines. Um, if you guys have seen the last couple of videos that I have posted, you will know that I have had a very, very difficult time with bill acceptors like these. And this, uh, the specific connector you want to look for are these really, really old connectors. Uh, not uh, not the best if you have a connector like this on your coin mech they're upgradable these are upgradable but uh, I wouldn't put them into service until you have converted them to MDB if you do purchase anything like that I don't think I'd pay anything more than 200 bucks a machine for it uh, I want to get like straight down to the nitty gritty if you find a machine that has a uh, connector like this that is something you put in your living room and charge your friends 25 cents a can you don't ever put it in a location ever you're just praying for problems so I'll probably go over that a few times throughout this stream it's something I definitely definitely want to talk to you guys about now this is uh, this is gonna be in place of my normal video I normally have a video out every single day right around five o'clock if I can get it out at five but uh, not today today I just wanted to talk about the difference between uh, certain machines and when you're going out and purchasing a machine what you need to look for and it's wicked 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 important that when you go out and you look for a machine you understand what MDB is and uh, you don't wind up putting yourself in the situation that I am currently in with about four machines. I've got an AP-113, amazing machines. They're absolutely amazing machines. Now, oh, you know what? I didn't change the title of this, uh, of this live stream. I don't think I did at all. is definitely not the end of month. I'm going to change it real quick. I'm not sure if it's going to show up for anyone, but we're going to change it to uh, do not buy old machines. Machines. Boy, I messed that one up, didn't I? Let's see here. Is it good? Can I save that? I don't think it matters. I think I think everyone's gonna hop on here just the way that it is. But it is what it is. <laughs> Six prong means MDB. Yes, I uh, should have brought an MDB connector with me when I got this ready. Um, so the point in this whole stream today is to talk about some of the frustrations I've gone through the past couple of days. All of these frustrations would have been avoided if I had upgraded all these machines to MDB before putting them before putting them out into service. Now, I put everything out into service just to get my business up and running, and I really, really genuinely wish I wouldn't have done that. I really wish I would have uh, upgraded them and uh, had them out before then. So... Uh, from here, we're probably just going to do some chat. <laughs> I'm going to catch up with some of these here. So we got uh, the Mercado channel jumped in here first. What is up, my dude? Philip Peters, hi. How are you? It's good to see you. I'm wicked behind in the chat, and I'll try to catch up with you guys as fast as I can. Big Guy Vending, really good friend of mine. Greetings and salutations, bro. DNA Vending, what is up? Tim in the house, everybody. Polar bear. It is polar bear here. Mom, what are you talking about, mom? <laughs> What's up, brother? Paul, how are you? Philip Peters, where am I from? New Hampshire. I'm from New Hampshire. Space. He he left his uh, he left his dirty pics for this. And then uh, what else we got? Six prongs means MDB, yes. Uh, just placed my first full line machine yesterday. You make some helpful videos. 
Awesome, dude. I'm I'm super glad that you got that machine out. I hope it makes you a lot of money. Uh, Wallace, is it true that you can get a free machine from the actual soda company, or is that not true? Okay, there's some there's some things that you need to meet first. Uh, there's some criteria that you need to meet first. You need to uh, get with your local. It's not the soda company. It's the bottling company. So you have a you have a structure like Coca Cola. We'll use Coca Cola as a as a uh, idea here. So you've got Coca Cola. They make syrup and sell syrup. They sell syrup to bottling companies, and bottling companies make bottles and fill the syrup in with water to get or with soda water to get you your soda. And then the bottling companies sell bottles to Walmart, to me, to you, to BJ's, and that's how the tree works. The bottling companies want to get their product out as fast and as far as they possibly can. So what they will do is if you have X amount of machines and X amount of time in service, they'll lease machines out to you so you can grow faster. And uh, the only thing is you need to purchase X amount of product from them every month, which works. It genuinely works. But it's, it, in my personal opinion, if someone was selling a route and the route was nothing but leased machines... I would not buy it. I personally wouldn't buy it because none of those machines are actually assets worth anything. And it, I mean, if I were to buy it, I would buy it for how much it made in a year. I I would pay, if they could prove to me that it made X amount of dollars last year, I would pay that X amount for that route. I wouldn't pay any more or any less. Well, I mean, I'd pay less if it was offered, but... That's about as far as it would go. Um, so the Mercan Mercado been watching your videos lately. Good guys, check him out. He's good. Should have brought it. I'm sorry, man. I, you know, I, I have one here somewhere, but uh, I don't think I'm gonna be get getting up during the stream. Um, Azan, what's up, my dude? How are you, brother? It's good to see you. New here. What's up? Stro time. Where are we at? Uh, Doug, you're my inspiration. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to actually be doing an unboxing of a Rhino tonight and putting it up, dude. That's awesome. I, you know, I don't think I've actually seen any uh, uh, content from your channel just yet, Big Guy Vending. So I'm excited to uh, see that. You're my inspiration, Polar Bear. <laughs> oh. Uh, Jamie, you're really putting in hard work for them daily videos. Hopefully it pays off for you. It, it's already, I'm already seeing a dramatic difference in my analytics and I'm super happy with uh, how things are going. I do hope that it grows at a nice, nice fast rate here. But uh, just to, just to reiterate, because I think we have a whole bunch of new people in here. I want to reiterate what this stream is about. The stream is about old machines and why you shouldn't buy them and how to tell if they're old. So we're going to start with this right here. I've gone over this a few times, but I think I think I should probably go over this on a regular basis with you guys. This here is a coin mech, okay? This is a coin mechanism that's been remanufactured to fit older machines. This is the connector for this mechanism. If you find a machine that has a connector like this, if you're going to buy it, this is a machine that you put beer in and you put in your living room. This is this is not a machine that you're going to put into service. This machine is wicked old. It's prone to issues. You're going to be going through coin mechs like crazy, and there was never really a standard uh, for these coin mechs, so they're all different. Uh, there was a whole bunch of different companies at the time making different stuff for different people as well. Um, oh. Uh, Mercado channel just said he downloaded tube buddy and it's amazing dude it is probably like the only reason I affiliated with them was because it is probably one of the strongest tools I have used to grow my YouTube channel and I absolutely love the program it's outstanding so now that you guys have a little bit of an understanding there I want to talk about uh, we're going to talk about bill acceptors as well this was designed to take an old this was designed to take an old uh, 
machine that didn't have a bill acceptor or anything like that and make it compatible with a bill acceptor. You can plug this into an old single price machine, plug it in, and now you've got these connectors on this side that will connect to a bill acceptor, but an old bill acceptor. So, I believe, I believe I should, should be able to plug this sucker right into this. This is an older bill acceptor, yep. Bam, right there. I think the other side is supposed to plug in too, but it doesn't look like it would fit this one, so we're not gonna try. Now I gotta disassemble all this so I can show you the bill acceptor. <laughs> Get off. There we go. Actually, we'll move on to the next coin mech before we go into that. And yes, yes, Space, I am, I am totally totally shameless about plugging stuff that I make money off of and I tell you guys I make money off of it so it's I don't think it's a big deal so if you see this kind of plug it's a little bit different of a story you can buy upgrade kits for this to make it MDB but make sure that you buy the upgrade kit before you put it into service um, because you you don't want to have a machine out there in service that is breaking down constantly. I'm finding out that there was something around 20 different models of CoinMax that uh, all had different voltages. They all had different, it was just a really big nightmare. And that's why when the N MDB standard came out, it made things so much easier. I gotta, I gotta say, I, I made a friend in mass. So I'm going to talk to him a little bit and see if it's okay if I shout him out every now and again. But, uh, there is, an enormous amount of help that this guy has given me and I've learned so much from him. I can't, I can't thank him enough for what he's taught me. Um, it's always good to have multiple mentors guys. <laughs> so this, this is a bill acceptor. This is a really old bill acceptor. Now, uh, you can see it's, it's got a built-in, it's got its own motherboard back there. It's all basic wiring. And uh, that doesn't mean anything, but this does. These are the connectors that this old bill acceptor uses. And if you want to disassemble this bill acceptor, you pull this top piece off, slide this out, and then if you want to clean the inside of it, there's a ne another one down there you can pull and pull up and slide through and clean it. These bill acceptors only accepted dollar bills in one direction and one way. So it needs to be face up in one direction only. And that's it. That's, that's all it is. So that's, uh, that's my breakdown of all the different, I mean, I didn't go through anything MDB, but this is all, those are all older ideas of what you can get, uh, space, uh, I use TubeBuddy and vidIQ. vidIQ is something you got from uh, Nick Nimmin, right? Or no, it's not Nick Nimmin. There's a there's another guy. Um, I can't remember. There's a, there's another guy who uh, really talks about how to grow your YouTube channel, and uh, their, their their channels are absolutely outstanding, super useful, and help out significantly. Um, you have to go check out the channel. This is a uh, big guy vending. You have to go check out the channel. I have vending content on this channel, but I have way more on my customization channel. I'm going to try TubeBuddy Tube Buddy for uploading. Um, you're going to love it. Yeah, TubeBuddy does so much. You can compare yourself with other channels. Uh, Social Blade's another one that's really good. And I don't make any money on Social Blade. But uh, those are really good. Uh, what's the oldest you got for a soda or snack machine. I have a soda machine from 1972. It's a uh, Dixie Narco 163 or something like that. It's uh, It's got four different options. They're all roll-in columns. The machine is not currently working. I'm going to get it refurbished and I, I think I may actually, uh, I may actually <laughs> put it into service, but, uh, um, the Mercado channel. Yeah. Two buddy on PC, much more to do. 
Oh, there's so much more to it. It's awesome. Now I've been using it for like two years back when I did YouTube. Another YouTube friend of mine recommended it to me. Yep. So do polar bears like Coca-Cola or Pepsi products? Ooh, that's a hard one. The polar bear technically promotes Coke, doesn't he? I'd have to say I actually like Coke products better too. I do. Yep, I like Coke products better. The only product from uh, Pepsi that I actually like is Mountain Dew and nothing else really. And in fact, I can actually vouch and say that nothing else really sells either. Mountain Dew is the only Coke product I have or uh, Pepsi product I have that sells really, really well. Um, outside of that, that's why that's why I got signed in with Coke before I got signed in. Actually, it's not the only reason. I've had a heck of a lot of trouble getting an account with Pepsi. Like it, it has been insanely difficult for me. <laughs> I'd like to get an account with them because uh, Pepsi Co. owns... Um, oh, I love Surge. Surge is so good. I really shouldn't drink it, though. I've been trying to drink more water lately. But uh, Pepsi Co. owns Lay's, uh, Frito-Lay. And uh, I really want to have an account with them. And in order for me to have an account with them, I have to have an account with Pepsi. So it's like, uh, and they want me to order 10 cases a week, and I'm just not that big yet. Looking forward to the day that I'm that big, don't get me wrong. But that's, uh, that's what it is. Uh, Dylan says, love the vids, keep it up. Absolutely, guys. I uh, definitely am going to be keeping it up. I'm not going to be able to uh, post... Um, like actual visiting location videos all of the time because I'm not there all of the time, but I have been trying to get a lot of stuff done lately and, uh, that is made for a lot of content. I have another video of me, uh, working on the green and purple monster today and, uh, I was unsuccessful in completely repairing it. So we are going to upgrade it to MDB and go from there. I think the board in that machine is fried. I think it's toast. Like it works, but we're not getting power to the bill acceptor or the coin Mac. So I tried to troubleshoot a lot and it just did not work. The friend's dad works for free to lay. My man's been bringing boxes of chips to wherever. <laughs> Dude, I wish I had a connection like that. I've been trying to find one and I think I'm just going to have to wait until I get big enough to start ordering product from them. In all reality, I'm doing fine with the 30 counts that I get from BJ's. I get like two or three months if I hit it just right on the product and it's usually sold out by then as long as I, like I said before, as long as I do it correctly. Um, I definitely need to figure out a solution to the bottom row. I stopped putting uh, pastries and stuff in the bottom row cause they just don't sell fast enough up here. Maybe if I did like one or two at a time, maybe that would work. I might do that. I might actually do that. Just put like maybe two or three, one or two deep in that whole thing and see if that does what I need it to do. We're going to move that over there. So I'm going to look up real quick. Actually, we're going to look up on the good old internet here. We're going to see what year MDB became a thing. So I can kind of help you guys figure out what exactly you should be doing. What year did M D B become What year did M D B become a vending standard? Tried changing it to MLB, not MLB, MDB. I wonder if I can disclude. Do that vending machine business. Huh. Maybe we can wiki it. Let's try wikiing it.
Uh, multi-drop bus is what it stands for, is a computer bus in which all components are connected to the electrical circuit. A process of arbitration, I think that's the word, man, I suck at reading, determines which device sends information at any point. The other devices listen for data, they listen for the data they are intended to receive. Multi-drop buses have the advantage of simplicity, extensibility, but offering differing electronical characteristics, making them relatively usable for high frequency or high bandwidth applications. This is why you're going to see a whole bunch of stuff like that in newer soda machines. They work really, really well. This is actually uh, the definition of a multi-drop bus which is MDB. Oh, I, I deleted it. What did I do that for? That was dumb. So we're going to go back up to that. Um, Vensoft actually has a forum on MDB as well. And I'm going to read that to you guys real quick. Um, MDB vending protocol. Vensoft protocol. Okay. MDB protocol explained. The MDB standard for multi-drop bus... Oh, sorry. The MDB stands for multi-drop bus and describes the computing language used by most vending machines. The protocol operates the VMC or vending machine control board. This language transfers information from the vending machine itself to the coin counting mechanism, the bill validator, and or the credit card or debit card reader. These three things are considered peripherals. The MDB protocol ensures that payments are processed correctly and efficiently and that they trigger the appropriate response in the vending machine, i.e. releasing the chosen snack. Benefits of MDB protocol for your vending business. If one of the payment processors attached to a vending machine malfunctions, Identifying the problem, repairing and or replacing it becomes much easier in MD mach machines, uh, in machines with MDB protocol. I'm going to say right off the bat that that is totally accurate because I am trying to find problems in two different machines right now that are not related to each other whatsoever. And I am having a very hard time. I have phoned a friend like four times and we're uh, still dealing with issues. So to correct this issue, I am going to be moving to MDB altogether with all of my machines. This gives the coin counter and bill validator the same type of plug and play capability as a computer keyboard or a mouse. Because switching the old one out for a new one is so quick and easy, the vending machine experiences little to no downtime. And this is totally accurate. Uh, switching them out with these old dinosaurs takes forever and it's wicked, wicked difficult. To sit, like you're literally throwing parts at it. You're not actually uh, you're not actually fixing anything. Uh, not only is the machine offline for mere minutes, there is also no technical ability needed to replace broken peripherals. This saves time and plenty of money over hiring a repair person or training employees more extensively. Many vending machine companies only send their route managers out with spare bill validators and coin mechanisms just in case one happens to be out of order. Replacing a smaller coin mechanism with a four or five tube model can benefit the vending machine business greatly because the machine will never run out of change between visits. This applies a lot with $5 bill acceptors, uh, bill acceptors that accept $5 bills. If you have just a single dollar Mac and you're someone puts a $5 bill in there, you're about to lose $4 worth of quarters, and that's a lot. Uh, more transactions can be completed. MDB protocol makes this possible as well. MDB protocol not only makes it easy to swap out payment process processing hardware, but it can also transmit reports about sales, inventory, and maintenance schedules. This automatic process speeds up each vending machine visit because the service person will not have to enter anything manually on route cards or charts. This is accurate, although I still strongly recommend using some sort of software. Um, the uh, Once you have MDB, you can put credit card readers on there and uh, you can you can 
make them work together with programs like Vensoft. Uh, the more efficient each stop on the route is, the greater the profits can be realized. So there's there's a lot more that goes on into this article. If you guys want me to keep reading it, I will. But first, I'm just going to stop and we're going to catch up on some of the comments so I can see what's going on here. Tim, thank you for the uh, thank you for the two dollar um, super chat. I really do appreciate it. Multi data bus. Where did I leave off here? Serge. How hard was it for you to start your vending machine business? Uh, Dylan said this. Um, so Dylan, I've told this story a bunch of times, but uh, I'm going to tell it again and I'll continue to tell it. <laughs> I've got another comment I can't wait to read. Um, I started, I lost my job and I took my last paycheck, bought a whole bunch of honor boxes and used every penny from that business to buy a soda machine. And from there, I've literally just rolled, just kept rolling everything in. Um, physically, very difficult. It's physically very hard to start a vending business. You need to move very heavy machines around. It's, it's not easy. Um, I stumbled across one of your videos yesterday. I've always wondered about vending machines. Vending machines are awesome. It is probably the Contrary to what I just said, <laughs> it's probably the easiest business to start. It's a difficult business to start because starting a business is difficult, but it's the easiest business, in my opinion, to start. Um, Tim says, maybe you could do a bit on the process on getting accounts with bottlers for newbies. Oh, that sounds like we just had a $5... Tom, what's up, dude? We accept ones, fives, ten, twenties, and dispense dollar coins or use bill validator recycler. Yes, Tom, how are you, man? I'm glad that you're. I'm glad that you're here. You probably know exactly why I'm having this live stream today. <laughs> All right, so let's catch up here. Um, my machine, my machine didn't fit KitKat in one of the smaller columns, dude. I run into that on every one of my machines. You have to, so you got to kitty corner them just right for them to fit. Um, they don't like AP machines. I have found that Kit Kats do not like AP machines, at least my AP machine. Try multi data bus. <laughs> I mean to say, what is the oldest you should get for a vending machine? So, okay, Wallace, I was trying to look that up. Um, year wise, that's really hard. I wonder, I wonder if the article that I was just reading, uh, Hey guys, uh, everyone who's watching right now, comment. Yes. If you want me to continue reading the article, comment. No, if you don't want me to, um, I might go into the article and just read real quick to see if I can answer your question, Wallace. Um, uh, Wallace's question. I meant to say, what is the oldest you should get for a vending machine? Soda or snack. I really want to say like early two thousands. Um, I believe M MDB came about around then, but I'm not entirely sure. Drink more water, bud. Dude, I drink so much water. You guys want me to keep going? All right, I'm going to go back into it. We're going to keep going for a little while. I'm going to copy and paste this link in the chat for you guys real quick. That's, uh, I just threw the, uh, link in there and, uh, hopefully that can, hopefully that can, uh, help you guys follow along if you'd like. So we're going to go on to the next chapter of this. Uh, this is the same, um, article. How do you know if MDB protocol is on your machine control board? The vast majority of vending machines that were manufactured within the last decade have MDB protocol and enabled control board. If you purchase refurbished machines from refurbished, uh, refurbished machines from before this time, there is one easy way to check it, to see if MDB is used. One, open up the machine and look at the coin mechanism. 
If it is attached to the control board with a six pin plug, you have an MDB protocol mechanism. This plug-in is usually white and fashioned from plastic. If the coin mechanism has a different type of plug, such as one with 15 pins or a different color, the machine is not MDB enabled. What to do if your vending machine's control board is not MDB enabled? If you find a non-white plug with nine or 15 pins, like I showed you earlier, guys, do not worry, quite a lot of vending machines still used in the business today are not MDB protocol enabled. Luckily, you do not have to buy a new machine. You can fix the old one without trouble or expense. Uh, what, what they mean by that, that was, that was the end of the uh, paragraph. What they mean by that is there are, uh, there are aftermarket boards, there are aftermarket uh, kits you can purchase to make your machine MDB. What if your vending machine control board is logic based? If it, if it MD, oh, I think that might be a, if it MDB protocol control board is not installed in your vending machine, that means it uses a logic based board instead. People in the industry sometimes call these micro mech or dumb mech interfaces. It is possible to buy it to buy a MDB conversion kit and install it yourself in all of your vending machines or hire an experienced technician to do, do it for you. This kit will let you easily plug in a new credit card reader, bill validator, coin mechanism, or coin mechanism that can be, re, uh, can be read as easily by the mechanic, uh, mechanics, blah, blah, blah read as easily by the machine's existing logic control board. Before you plug in any old payment proce processing peripheral into your machine, you need to check the wire harness. Check that the wire harness has the same voltage requirements. It is possible to have a vending machine that operates at 24 volts while a coin counter or card reader processes at 110 volts. If these do not match, hooking them together will, ca will cause severe electrical problems, like fires. The safest way to ensure no mistakes is to use voltage stickers on MD on uh, vending machines in your peripherals in your parts collection. I agree with this. I really wish that uh, I should probably get some stickers and start sticking my stuff up with it. Uh, consider these well-known vending machine models that include logic-based control boards. Um, automated products AP7000, automated products AP LCM1, LCM2, LCM3, and LCM4, the Crane National 145, 146, and 147, and the Dixie Narco DN501E. Um, what if your vending machine is a single price model? Before we get into that, uh, someone just threw a super chat in. I just want to say thank you real quick to uh, PebMets. Really do appreciate the super chat. Really do appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to catch up just a little bit here for you guys. Okay. Yes, yes, sure. Printed you off. Yeah, Tim, that music video is awesome. I liked it. You did pretty darn good. Hi, Papa Bear. What up, Mosley fam? He gets free water from his machines. Oh, well, it's not free. I mean, it's it's 50 cents a bottle still, but yeah. Uh, dang, thanks, Brandon. Blah, blah, blah. Hit that like for Jamie. Thank you, Brandon. Appreciate that. Uh, short circuit. What's the biggest difference between Vensoft and my Ventrac. You know, I've never used my Ventrac. Uh, perhaps I should check it out and uh, see see if I can answer that question for you. I'll look into it. Um, short circuit. I have to make a stop at my claw machine tomorrow. Got a text from owner that product is low and on one of my change machines is empty. That is a good problem to have, my friend. Ever thought of making a gaming channel? You know, I've made one before. I just can't stay quite as consistent with a gaming channel as I do with my vending channel. I, I guess I could probably live stream. 
Uh, so Josie and I have been talking significantly a lot lately about playing D and D. I wonder, uh, I wonder if she'd be open to live streaming it. I've never played before and she's like wicked big into it right now. And, uh, you guys can call me a nerd all you want, but I, I kind of like the idea. <laughs> Uh, besides the machines and the locations and the drinks and snacks, do you need any paperwork like business license or anything to get started? Um, so Wallace, this depends on where you live, uh, the town specifically, go to your town hall and ask them. That's what I figured out. And they told me I needed an LLC to operate in the state of New Hampshire. Um, I also, it depends on where you start putting your machines too. I have some machines in Vermont, so I have to, sp I have to pay um, income tax in Vermont. Cause I don't, I don't have, uh, in New Hampshire, there's no income tax. So the, m the money that I make from the, uh, Tim, yeah, my brother has a gaming channel. Um, I actually do all the editing for it. And that's, that's the problem is, uh, <laughs> I can only fit so much into a day, but maybe I should consider a, a live streaming gaming channel. Or something like that on Twitch or... I don't know. I'll think about it, guys. Uh, I'm big into Final Fantasy and stuff like that. So, maybe. We'll see. Um, wait. Stranger Things a video game now? Hold on. Hold the phone. Is Stranger Things a video game? Because... Yo. Need to get in on that. Um... So in Vermont, I have different paperwork and I have to pay, I have to pray, pay, pay, uh, some stuff there, pay some taxes there, man. Now I want to look, <laughs> now I want to look up the stranger things game That's nuts. Uh, so I'm gonna get back into the article for you guys real quick. Uh, what if your vending machine is a single price model with no control board? I have one of these. If you have been in the vending business for a very long time or saved money to start up by purchasing older machines, you may not have a control bar board at all. These are often called single price machines because you can only sell items for one price. In general, trying to install an MDB protocol control board onto one of these old machines is not cost effective. If you have a particular reason for doing so rather than replacing the machine as needed, you will need to hire a certified vending machine technician to do the work for you. What they mean by that is there's a lot of fabrication involved. Not only will an MDB protocol enabled board need to be installed inside the vending machine, the tech will also need to install specific wiring harness before continuing. Then, much like retrofitting a logic-based board with an MDB device, the voltages of varied peripherals must be checked against the vending machine before installation. What does a conversion kit cost? A conversion kit costs a considerable amount less than a new vending machine. However, they are not necessarily cheap and can definitely add up if you have multiple vending machines to upgrade. An MDB kit costs a few hundred dollars and you will also need to pay for installation by an experienced technician. Eh, that kind of depends it's really not that difficult. If you guys have any sort of mechanical experience, I'm pretty sure you can install one of these things. Replacing coin mechanisms and bill val validators are another expense, but this must be done so the voltage requirements all match. You can get a refurbished coin mech for less than $100 and bill validators for approximately $200. You can actually buy kits that come with the bill validators and the, uh, and the, um, coin max as well but that is the whole article and i uh i really hope that that article helped you guys i i kind of want to check out i didn't realize i i knew vensoft had blogs but i didn't realize for the longest time that uh oh here's a good one the future is cashless what's in it for vending machine owners <laughs> that's something i want to get into eventually is uh, I want to uh, start. I want to start moving away from cash altogether. Space, no, no what, no what. I think he's talking about D and D. Yep, 
Dungeons and Dragons. That game. Dooned in Florida. Uh, no, but they played Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, yeah. They definitely did. So my kids and wife, uh, we started playing. <laughs> nice, dude. That's some funny stuff right there. Guys, it's hot. It is wicked hot. It's like 78 degrees and there's a stupid amount of humidity. Not a fan of humidity at all. That's why I'm a polar bear. Not uh, not a regular bear. Polar bear. Um, so do you guys have any questions about the difference between MDB and uh, logic-based boards or dumb max? I'm going to check out that my Ventrac thing right now while I'm waiting for some responses on this just so I can get an idea and maybe answer the question. My Ventrac. Whoa. But, uh, I think it's broken. I think their website's broken, bro. I gotta show you guys this. How do I scene two studio mode? Can you see this? This this is what happened when I pulled it up. So here's uh here's here's my first impression. Uh Vensoft doesn't often do this ever. <laughs> this is my first impression of my Ventrack. I wonder if this is it. I wonder if that's the wrong, is this it? What's this? I don't know what this is. Yeah. Drop a link, bro. I think, uh, I think there's too much, too much stuff here. Ha, ah, look, Vensoft. Ha ha ha. Track software is now free. Bulk funding. Dun, dun. So I'm not entirely sure what the difference between the two softwares are. Um, but what I can say is that, uh, I love Vensoft. It's pretty awesome. Tomorrow will be 104. What? Where do you live? Death? Oh my gosh. I prefer the heat. It's a l What? 111? How are you still, don't you start cooking food at that degrees? No, I'd probably start cooking it at more than that. Uh, Tim says, thanks for the live, bud. Love you. Boom, bro fist. I think that's a PewDiePie thing, bro fist. Got to run. Tim, have a good one, bro. Thank you so much for stopping in. Well, I might actually, I might actually cut a little bit short today, guys. So I might stop here off at about 45 minutes. Uh, unless you guys want to talk about anything else, um, Tom Candy just showed up. We're just about to head out, dude. Is uh, so if anyone's got any questions, drop them in there now. I'll try to uh, I'll try to see if I can get back to him. Gamer one says 111. You live in hell, <laughs> dude. I totally agree. 111. Ugh, nope. I couldn't. I couldn't do it. Could not do it. Listen, horrible. 90. What did I do wrong to deserve this? N anything above 90? Okay, I see what this is. You're trying to kill me. That's what it is. I'm trying to you're trying to end my life here. That's what it is. I don't do the uh, don't do the heat thing well. Have never done the heat thing well. Don't like the heat thing. You, look look look. Look, you can see on the screen, you can see all the sweat. It's too much heat. Humidity. Bad. Bad for polar bear. Bad for me. What's a good seller for the small slots in a candy machine? Oh, peanut M and M, Skittles, um, any candy bar. Candy bars sell really good. I get uh, paydays sell really good for me. I got a location that eats through uh, Hershey's almond. I can actually hold on. Give me two seconds, and I'll read a whole bunch of them off to you for you. Whole bunch of them. Van soft. We're gonna go right into my. Vensoft, and I'll just read them right off to you. Ooh, sales are coming down on the drink machine, huh? It's weird because it's wicked hot. All right, snacks. 
I'm gonna filter by snack. All right, small ones, small ones. We got mounds, almonds, Kit Kat, Swedish Fish, Twix, Hershey Almond, Payday, Almond Joy, uh, Milky Way, Snickers, Reese's, M and M's, Caramel M and M's, Peanut M and M's, Hershey's Cookies and Cream, Crunch Bars, Hershey's Regular Bars, and uh, I think that's about all I carry. That's that's it right there. Hope that helps. Um, tell me about it. I had to move my machine by myself yesterday. It was a pain in this heat. Yeah, dude, moving your machine, moving machines by yourself is really, really hard in general. Oh, I should probably throw this out there because I've had a couple of people kind of being jerks about it in the last couple of days. Uh, the video where I moved the, uh, I moved the green and purple machine. I parked in a handicap spot. I was told to park there. I was asked to park there. And uh, the town that I was in is a whopping 4,500 people strong on, on a busy day. And uh, if anyone were to ask to park there, I would have 100% moved ASAP. So I know it's not you guys, but just, just to get it out there, just to address it. But anyways, guys, I am, I am going to go take a shower and call it a day. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Do me a huge favor. Check out the links in the description below if you want to support the channel. And uh, I think we'll leave it at that. Guys, love life. Live your dreams. Be Farnsworthy. Bear Squad. Peace out.